All right, guys. Today's video, I'm going to be working on something a little bit newer for a change. This motor was given to me. The guy I was doing some work for had a had two Craftsman mowers, and this motor mower was given to him. They said the motor was blowing up on it, and the transmission went out in his other mower. So we put that engine on the other mower and make one good mower out of both of them. And this motor was part of my payment for helping him do it. So I figured I'd check it out and see if I can get it going. But the people that he got the motor off of said it was locked up and wouldn't do nothing. But when we was pulling it off the other motor, I started removing the pulley off the bottom of the crankshaft and the motor just spun right over. And I told him that it ain't locked up. It's got some other problems too, you'll see when we start looking at it. And I got a theory of what happened. But anyway, if you can't see it, this came off a Craftsman motor. It's a 18.5 horsepower overhead valve Intec Plus. It's a Model 31. The date code on this engine is 2005, but these are basically the same as the ones they're putting out right now. This has the AVS system, anti-vibration system, which uh, replaced the old uh, synchro balancer crankshaft. And so we'll have a look at that because I got to drop the oil sump off of it. And I'll explain why here in a minute when we get to that far. But first of all, I'm going to take the flywheel shroud off and show you uh, what happened to it. Okay, so the first thing you notice with the flywheel shroud remover is something missing on the flywheel. It's your plastic cooling fins that bolt to the flywheel. Well, here it is, stuck on the inside of the shroud here. And the rest of it is melted on the block here. And uh, so here's my theory what happened here. I figured they were cutting grass with it and they... And somehow the one of these bolts worked loose or something and made this sling apart and they just thought all the noise was probably like a rock or something underneath the deck so they just kept on cutting where actually what happened the cooling fans broke off and the motor got so hot that it melted that on the block like that and uh, you can see everything got hot on this I just tried to pull that off and it broke like that and the motor turns over and the piston's moving and the valves are moving so there's nothing uh, there's no major internal damage as far as all that goes but uh, I'm uh, concerned about the cylinder being scored or anything from where it got so hot but the one thing that's helping this motor it's got uh, you can see the oil filter on it this motor has the oil pump and oil filter so that uh, probably saved it because there wasn't much oil in it it's probably still enough for it to pick up but the reason they don't have no compression, if you look down here, you see a burnt spot there. So what I'm thinking is it got so hot that the head gasket blew on it. And I'm hoping that's all that, uh, that's wrong with it, besides possibly a warped head, which I can surface that. Also ordered a new coil for it. I don't know if this one's good or not, but I figure if that block got that hot to melt plastic, this coil is probably weakened. So. I just went ahead and put another one on it. I already got the, the plastic fins off of an older engine that should bolt right on this, unless they've changed the flywheels. But uh, it's got the carburetor and everything on it. It's probably needs clean because it's been sitting for a while. What surprised me, you would think that that plastic uh, manifold on the carburetor would have melted to the block, but it didn't. I'm going to go ahead and pull the valve cover off and show you something else before we start tearing it apart. The gasket stayed intact, but I got another one for it anyway. Okay. So let me get a close-up here and show you some things going on in here. Okay, so the first thing you notice is around the exhaust valve, it just looks burnt. You can see. The motor got so hot it melted the plastic uh, guides on this. I'm hoping there ain't no major valve damage or nothing else that can't be fixed and get it running again. But uh, if it can, it can. I'll use it for parts. But I'm going to try my best to get it back to running. So I'm going to go ahead and do a few things off camera. I'm going to pull the muffler off. Just two bolts here and a bolt here. And I'm going to take the starter off. Which two bolts to hold it on. And I'll go ahead and take the carburetor off. And we'll go ahead and look at the uh, linkage here before I start pulling it apart. This has uh, an LMT 
carburetor with the fuel seal and oil on it. You can see this one has the, like I said earlier, it's got the oil filter on it. And uh, I figured this carburetor will need to clean, but it may not. Uh, but yeah, this is the, uh, the, the linkages have stayed basically the same as uh, the old style. Your chokes right here. It hooks into there. I mentioned this in another video. Uh, this one has different holes drilled in it, but if this tab ever breaks off, you can actually drill another hole for it. That'll work fine. But uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pull all this off, off camera and we'll get back to you and pull in the head and everything. I'm going to also uh, remove the coil, which are just these two bolts here. Okay, so at this point I'm going to start breaking the head, head bolts loose. And uh, I did buy a new head gasket for it. And I'm just hoping that the cylinder's in good shape. And that's the only thing wrong with it, blown head gasket, which I might be completely wrong. It could be something else. It could be a hole in the piston as far as I know. Which would uh, be kind of interesting to see, but I hope it ain't. <laughs> so we'll get back to you as soon as we get ready to split the head off of it. Okay, so I'm on the last bolt up here. Here, I'll just share the surprise with you. I don't know what I'm getting into right here. And the head was already loose, and some of the bolts were already loose too. I hope that's all that's wrong with it. But I kind of got my doubts, to be honest about it. <laughs> Well, the cylinder don't look too bad, but I see something wrong with the exhaust valve. We'll have to look at that here and see. Before I lose them, I'm going to take these little caps off these valves here. Yeah, right there's what I was talking about. One of the pieces, pieces of plastic fell down inside the valve chamber there. I still see factory home marks in that cylinder, which it don't mean nothing. It's still smooth as can be. A light film oil on it. It's got that decked uh, piston here. Okay, so we'll, let me tear the head apart a little bit and we'll look at it. Okay, so this is the head gasket. You see it was blown. These are bad about blowing in between the cylinder and valve chamber. Because uh, you can see there's no bolts or nothing over here to keep it tight, so it's easy for gases to start going through there. But uh, that's not the major problem. I already took the valves out, and uh, I started to show you on camera, but I figured it'd be easier to show you putting them back in. These are the type, like in a vehicle, uh, it's got them keepers that hold the valve on there. You see here, it's got these real small keepers. One goes on each side like that. But uh, this is the intake valve here. And the valve itself looks like it should clean up pretty good. It's, uh, they are burnt some, but there ain't no uh, major uh, pitting or nothing, so they should clean up. But uh, the problem is the valve seat. You see on the intake when it's all flush, but on this one, it's sitting crooked where the aluminum got so hot and expanded the seat started falling out. And a little bit more, it would have came completely out. And there's a several different ways that you can uh, fix this. You can remove it and put a new one in, uh, which I might have to do. But we're just going to try for right now to repress this one in. Then I'm going to take a punch and go around it staking it. I've seen people do it before, and uh, they seem to work when you do that, so we're going to try that and see. Then uh, anytime you do anything with a valve seat, you're supposed to use a valve seat cutter or grinder to resurface it, but I don't have the tools to do that with, so we're just going to have to do some uh, heavy reseating to get it to uh, seal right, in which uh, if I get this flush and down all the way, it shouldn't take too much, but... Uh, We'll just have to try that and see. And with that being crooked like that, it's going to be a little harder to press in than if it was out even. But 
I'll try my best to get it in there better. But uh, I had to, we had this happen on a flathead engine one one time, and uh, we took it to a guy, and he put a new seat in there, and he had that uh, new wave valve cutter, valve seat cutter, and recut it. But you don't always have to do that. That's just the recommended and the fastest way of doing it. But really expensive. Eventually, I will get it. I needed. I got some other engines that need valve guides, and uh, this does have some valve guide play, which I'm not going to worry too much about for right now, but you see this, just a little bit of play, and the intake valve don't have hardly any, and uh, well, I'm going to surface this with my surfacing plate, I just want to talk about it before we get started on it, and I'm going to take these studs completely out. The way this can just sit flush on here before I start uh, pounding on this, and uh, might have to heat up around it with a torch to get it to expand some, so that'll go in. We'll have to see how it does. Might be stubborn, it might not be. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I probably the best method would be to remove this, but I'm afraid of doing more damage to it removing it. But uh, I got a uh, one and one sixteenth socket here. Uh, a uh, bearing or race driver would be the best thing for this, but I don't have a set available here, uh, so I'm just going to use that. Then I put an extension in the socket like that. That way, I got basically it serves the same purpose as a driver. But you can feel it sitting flat on there like that, and we're going to try to press it back in there and see what it does. That seems to be going in. Now I'm going to get a smaller socket that fits just. So it appears to be flush. It went in easier than I thought. So, like I said, I'm sure that seat is loose in the head. So I'm going to do it off camera. I'm going to take a punch, center punch around here. All this does, it puts more pressure on the outside of it. I'm just going to take a punch here and hit it in probably a few different places like this to put a little more pressure on it. And that should be enough to keep it in place because all that does is just put a little pressure on there, kind of like almost like putting a clamp on it almost. It should make for a perfect seal. Uh, just have to hope for the best on it. If it falls out, Again, and I'll have to get a new seat for it and uh, install it properly. But uh, I've seen people do this before, and it's usually enough to get by. And uh, as long as the engine don't overheat again, you probably shouldn't have no problems out of it. Now you'll have to reseat the valve. Probably pretty heavy on this because this may not be back 100% factory like it originally was. And uh, since there's a little bit of play in the exhaust valve guide. Uh, you'll have to reseat it real good. And before I do that, I'm going to clean all this carbon up off camera. I'm going to stick the valves in there and clean all this up, and we'll get back to you. And I still got to surface the head and block too. Okay, guys, a little while later, just got through working on the valves. Got them lapped in. And put STP on the valve stems there. That way, there's something in the valve guys. Try to clean up some of this burnt burnt on oil here and I surfaced the head here with my surfacing block. If you need to see how to do that, I'll put the video in up here and I also did the deck on the block. Got it looking pretty good. So uh, now we'll go ahead and put the valves back in all the way. I got a little trick for putting this type of valve in. I showed it before. I take a gear off a crankshaft, my lawnmower engine, put it underneath there. That way, when you push from the valves, they don't move as much. And on this particular engine, both of these springs are the same, but on some, the uh, exhaust one will be a little stronger. But on this case, they're both the same. But I can tell by the discoloration of this one is probably the exhaust valve. So we'll put it in here. And these springs are so weak that you can actually compress them by hand. Now, if you got somebody to help you, this is when you want them to help you because. This is kind of hard to do this with this type. Now the old type, they had the thing that slides like that sideways. They're no problem, but these little little valve keepers here 
like I showed, they just stick on the valve stem right there in the groove. That's what goes inside here to hold it. But we're going to try to do it here. Get them started and hopefully they'll pop in place, but sometimes they do. Got one. There it is. Hope that didn't block you when I was doing that. You can kind of see how they go in. That's all it holds the retainer clip and valve in. While these are harder to work with, they actually are a little more reliable than the old type. But I still like the old type better. I got them both started. Got that one caught. There it is. Just like that. You can see both valves are closed. Both of them are moving free. Now the valves are installed. Now I keep one of these extra in my, in my toolbox just for doing that. You can see I got the deck level pretty good that's the burnt spot I was talking about where I assume the head gasket blown but I'm not for sure if it actually blown or not because of that valve seat was loose I figured that was the main problem they got 31 stamped in the block because it's a model 31 engine okay you got two ways you can tear this type of engine apart with the oil pump this little pl plate right here is where your oil pumps at you can go ahead and take this off and remove the oil pump or you can just wait and take it off afterwards the way you can line up the pump and everything after it's on there or you could uh, just don't mess with this at all and uh, line the rod up when you put the sump back on there's several different ways you can do it but I'm just going to leave it in here for right now we'll probably take, take it off to clean it and everything I'm going to go ahead and remove the oil filter and if it ain't too tight I can get it by hand and it's tight so we'll have to put something on it to get that off okay like I've talked about before anytime you take your sump off you want to drain your oil out first there's always going to be some in there but you want to do that first I'm going to take all these bolts out off the camera here and we'll get back to you on taking this loose okay so I got all the bolts out and this is the type with the separate washer and we'll talk more about that when we put it back together but uh And it's probably a good decision to take it apart. A lot of dirt and sludge in there. And so right here is what uh, drives your oil pump. You see it flying right here. As long as you don't turn nothing, this will go right back on like it is. But here's your oil slinger and governor. It still acts as an oil slinger because the fin's on there, but. It does have an oil pump as well. This is the new ABS anti-vibration system here. If you look, it's just got a slot right here where the counterweights are. It just goes over top of this to hold it in place. A little bit different than the old style. But there's a piece of plastic from probably from the uh, push rod guides on the top. And the oil feels almost like grease where it's been burnt. So I'm going to clean everything and I will be taking, we'll take the oil pump out here in a minute. I just wanted to see what the inside of the block looked like. 